Something really beautiful happens when the ideas of two coaches come together to just make something special, something unique that you can bring into this world that just enriches the lives of everyone. Que pasa, Pisha? So I'm joined here today with my good friend Anton Chernyshov. Anton is a world famous kite coach and he's brought you guys some amazing videos like learning to fly, surviving the death loop. In today's how-to video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys about something that I call flow. Flow is about how you ride in waves such that you can maximize your jumps. Waves. Mm. <laughs> <Showing> waves. <laughs> Improving your jumps in flat water is easier than in waves because each approach and takeoff can be the same. The lack of obstacles in flat water allows you to make minor changes to your technique and rarely figure out the recipe for jumping high. While riding in waves can help you do push big jumps, it can also be very challenging because the incoming waves and chop can be hugely disruptive to your speed edging, and kite position. We're going to teach you three crucial skills so you can flow better in waves. A good jump has three prerequisites. Good speed, edging, and a suitable kite position. So understand that these techniques are super critical really making sure that you can do as many jumps as possible in a session and just maximize those opportunities. Before we begin, I want you to understand the importance of riding with a low kite. So I've got my bro Fabi over here and we're going to show you how that geometry works. If the kite is high, then your kite will be pulling you up and your harness will be above the board. Boom, harness above the board. When you put your kite low and lean against its pull, your harness goes behind the board. With this geometry, you can see how you are able to put your board between you and the kite. If the board is not between you and the kite, you will not be able to control your speed, point of sail, generate power, or pop over incoming waves. This is essential. Now that we've addressed that, let's get into it. Using Cape Town as an example, the kickers right at the front are too close to the shore, so we often don't have enough speed to hit them yet. The kickers at the back are often too big, so you lose speed riding up them, too flat, closing out, or just straight up unpredictable. In Cape Town, I have the most success with the kickers in the middle, so my goal is to hit those. So that means I need to have good speed, edging and kite position already when I get to that kicker. So when you're riding out, you need to be looking at not only the obstacle in front of you, but also looking behind that wave for your golden kicker. So guys, when you're finished watching my video, make sure you go check out Anton's video, teaching you some other things about how to jump using kickers. You'll find the link down below. Meow. Skill two, popping over waves. It's important that you pop over waves rather than jump over them using your kite. If you use your kite to jump, your kite will be out of position and your edging will be buggered when you land. If you don't know how to pop, you really should learn. Watch Lewis Crathen's video on how to pop. Note that popping isn't about jumping, but rather about carving upwind through the water and then pressing hard off of your back foot. When you pop over the waves, the goal is to leave the kite at 35 or 40 degrees, landing on edge. Try to land on the back or downward slope of the wave, not in the flat, as this downward slope will absorb you better. When you pop, sheet the bar in to cover more distance. Riding in waves is dope, 
But if you want to level up your jumps in beautiful flat water, I'm hosting several clinics and a downwinder in September and October in Brazil, pending COVID-19 news. When you're approaching a wave that you're able to ride over because it isn't too steep yet or it's small, make sure you absorb the wave. Keep your upper body stationary while you pull your legs up. Think of your legs like a car's suspension when driving over a speed bump. What you don't want to do is ride into the wave, get shot up into the air slightly and land in the flat because this will disturb your edging technique, which is super important like we said before. These three crucial skills of selecting good kickers, popping over obstacles and absorbing obstacles really come in handy at spots with waves, places such as Cape Town, Canyos de Mecca, spots in the Netherlands, Tenerife, Oregon, really just loads of places. Rider of the episode goes to Cohen van Dijk. He's killing it at big air and freestyle and he's definitely someone to watch out for in the future. Sweet guys, I'm actually keeping really, really busy. I'm working on a super big, very challenging, exciting project at the moment. And over and above that, I'm trying to get some more how-to videos together. I'm working on a whole bunch at the moment. <laughs> I'm super ADHD, I can hardly focus on one thing at a time. And my next videos are gonna be teaching you how to do a super long back roll hand drag, how to do the preload pop, and brrr, drum roll please i'm going to teach you the most important things that i teach all the guys who come to me for coaching in my clinics how to jump really high how to just how to be a fucking legend and break your woo record so be sure you subscribe if you want to catch more of my videos i give kite surfing clinics coaching all over the world those are on pause at the moment but as soon as i can be back giving some more coaching be it in Europe or Morocco or maybe even America, I will be back. I'm gonna take the first chance I get to run a clinic. Yes, woo! So, this is probably the wackiest fucking outro I've ever done. Let me know what you think about the video in the comments and be safe everybody. Meow.